Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. It's time to worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm fixing to preach to us. Before I do that, I want you to clap your hands. Shout yes to the King of glory. Oh, come on, shout yes. We want to invite God to have his perfect way in us today. Amen. If you have your Bible, we're going to turn in the book of God to chapter 2, verse 1 of the book of St. Mark. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1. What a great looking crowd you have here today. Glad to see all of your smiling faces present, counted for. Amen. Mark chapter 2, verse 1, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days. Thank you. And it was noised that he was in the house. Would you say that with me? In the house. Uh, come on, he was in the house. Straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Everybody say, he was in the house, and the house was full, so he decided to preach. They come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. When they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay, Verse 5 declares, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Somebody say that with me. God only. Say it. They were right. Come on. They were correct. Only God can forgive sins. But aren't you glad you know Jesus is? Oh, don't say was. He is God. <laughs> Boy, I'm feeling it now. Whoo. Immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 10 is where I'm going to preach from today but that ye may know. Now, if you weren't here the first hour, I'm so sorry. You're going to feel a little behind for the next few minutes. We've been living in the know for about an hour now. <laughs> Just go back and watch it. It'll be online a few, few hours. That ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed. Now watch this. Go thy way into thine own house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus said, okay. Okay. Which is easier, take up your bed and walk or thy sins be forgiven thee. He said, so, but so, so you'll know that I have the power to do it. Translation, so you'll know I'm God. I'll just do both. You're forgiven and get up and go. <laughs> and they evidently believed because they started to glorify God. And here's what they said. We never saw it on this fashion. 
I want you to say this out loud. It never, it never happened before. But the minute it does, it can happen again. And again. And again. I'm just, I, and again. Whatever he's done, he'll do again. Now, I want to preach to you for the next little while. The title of my message, Now. And, and in Texas, we're prone to say, right now. Not next week, not next year. Come on, not in some future moment when I finally get it. No, now. God lives in the perpetual present. We, we have calendars and clocks and smartphones and we put stuff on the schedule. And You know what Jesus said to his disciples about all that? He said, don't say tomorrow I'm going to do something. You say, if it be the will of the Lord, tomorrow I'll do it. Why? Because God controls time. He, he don't live inside of time. He envelops time. There's no past. There's no future. It's just now. That's why he said today is the day of salvation. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing now. Shout now at me. You may be seated. I'm going to try to get to my point here. We, we have been out on the West Coast, and I mentioned in the first hour, but they've, they've appointed me to be the point man for the outreach efforts of General Conference, and I'll be colluding with hundreds of, of preachers and churches, and they'll be coming together in mass, and uh, we're, we're going, get this, we are going to disperse 50,000, let that, let your brain envelop, 50,000 cards that have a, y'all familiar with QR codes? Anybody here know what a QR code is? Okay, I'm not seeing, everybody should be going, yeah, well, yeah, that's that thing where, you know, you scan it with your phone and it takes you where you need to go. We're going to hand out 50,000 cards, invitations. And when they scan that QR code, it brings them to the website, tells them about Revive America, tells them about the church, tells them the location, tells them where to go. What an incredible piece of technology. And, and, we, and I am responsible to make sure all 50,000 of those wind up in somebody's hand. We don't want them just laying around on chairs when conferences are. We want everybody to get involved. So in the next three weeks, 50,000 invitations. Uh, it's going to be quite a deal. So pray for us that, that God will direct us and I'll have the wisdom to encourage and the charisma to get everybody on board. And so that's what I've been working on. And so my point is this. We're very focused on that day. Okay? Now this is going to blow your mind. Friday night, October 4th, 2024, there's going to be 15 to 16,000 people in one room hearing about the miracle saving grace of Jesus Christ in Long Beach, California. And it's going to be a moment. But we're so hyper focused on that future date, on that future moment, that if we're not careful, we will lose sight of the fact that He wants to heal today. He wants to save now. He wants to deliver now. I don't want to wait till that moment, that day. I want to go ahead and get in the Holy Ghost today. I want to see God do something in this room. I want God to deliver you and deliver me and heal me. And so I have been on this, this, this campaign of living in the moment, being in the now. Many of you know my sister. Her name is Donna. She's my prayer warrior, my prayer coverage. She has a team of prayer warriors. They pray over me. I talked to her on the way here this morning. She prayed over me. And she's very important in my life. But uh, several years ago now, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, 
she went through months of chemo. They, the, I mean, the doctor said, we're going to take you to the very door of death with this chemo. Then we'll do the surgeries and then we'll bring you back. And uh, it was in that, in that crisis moment when she was more dead than alive. I mean, she was laying in a the bed. They had just chemoed and chemoed and chemoed and chemoed. And uh, I hadn't seen her. And so I finally took a week off and I went there to see about her. And I walked in and, and she was laying in the bed and I sat down on the edge of the bed and took her hand, started talking to her. And one of those chemo heat flashes hit her and she reached up and ripped her headscarf off. Well, I had not seen her. And when she ripped that headscarf off, instead of that beautiful head of long flowing hair, it was baldness. My sister was laying there completely balded by this chemo. And I don't mind telling y'all, I lost it. I mean, I was so overwhelmed and so distraught. I finally had to get up and excuse myself and leave the room. I was crushed in my spirit. My faith was at a zero in that moment. I, I was, I've never been more devastated than that moment. And uh, when I finally regained my composure, I went in and sat down beside her and apologized and told her, I am so sorry. She said, Bubba, she said, I should have thought about it. I, I, I should have warned you. I, I knew you hadn't seen me and I shouldn't have done that to you. I said, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm good with it now. I'm fine. I'm over it. So I went to the evangelist quarters. They were letting me stay in. About two o'clock in the morning, my phone binged and she texted me. Two o'clock in the morning, she texted me. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's totally lost on you. It's like you're awake at 2 a.m. to take a text. Not usually. Normally, I would have my phone silenced. But when you go to see your sick sister who's more dead than alive, you kind of keep the thing on just in case. And so she texts me, what are you doing? I said, I'm laying here talking to God. She said, what are you telling him? I said, well, I just told him out loud that I can't be me without you and that I need him to do something about that. Whew. Did, did I mention that was several years ago? And then I talked to her this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, she's totally recovered from her cancer. God, God brought her through it. And she's still praying for me. But my point, now, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I, remember, I'm talking about now. I'm talking to you right now, big boy. I'm talking about now. So I just recently went and saw, I didn't actually go see her. I went to preach at a church in Mississippi and uh, she sent me word she was coming. And so I told the church that morning, I said, now, I said, uh, Sister Tenak is going to be here tonight. And that's an inside joke because when I go to Mississippi, you know, I come here, I'm Brother Plemons. When I go to Mississippi, I'm Donna's brother. Kid you not. Everybody introduced me. Oh, this is Donna Tenak's brother because she, she's like a, you know, super cheese over there, you know. And so uh, I said to the church, I said, now listen, Sister Tenak's going to be here tonight. I said, but I'm telling you right now, before she gets here, do not give her the microphone. I ain't competing with that. <laughs> and so she got the news and heard that I said, don't give her the microphone. And so she was coming. Well, she didn't show up. And her daughter came and told me, mom didn't want you to know this, but she's been very, very sick. She said, I, she wanted to come tonight and I insisted that she stay home. I said, she's having some major problems. I said, well, what's going on? She said, well, her kidneys are failing, which is the result of extended, prolonged chemo. It's very common. And so she didn't show up. And so we prayed for her. And so the next night, she showed up. Here she was. She said, I heard you tell him not to give me a microphone. I said, you ain't getting nowhere near a microphone tonight. I can tell you that right now. I'm on, I'm on the deck and I'm preaching and I don't want you up there winning the game before I get up. No, stay, just sit down. So when I finally got up, it was time to preach. I remembered a moment, Brother Wolf, there, are you up there somewhere? I was preaching in Lorena, Texas in this church when it was in Lorena. And my mother and niece were there. And, and, and my mother had just had a hospital crisis moment. And she was awaiting some test results from her doctor. 
and I was standing in that pulpit and the devil was taunting me and this is what he was telling me. You can't do it here. You can't be that here. This is home. You can't be acting like that here. And it made me mad. And so my righteous indignation just got up on my tippy toes. I said, oh yeah, watch this devil. I said, mother, you don't have no heart trouble. Your doctor's gonna call you at 9.30 in the morning and tell you you've been eating too many turnip greens. <laughs> what? Tomorrow morning, 9.30, Dr. Speckmeyer, and he's going to tell you you've been eating too many turnip greens. Now, folks, that's what you call coloring in the lines. As God is my witness, at 9.30 a.m. on Monday morning, her phone rang. She was sitting there waiting on it. Hello, Peggy Ruth, you've been eating too many turnip greens. I'm just telling you, listen to me. Don't let the enemy tell you you can't do it now. You can do it now. You can speak it now. You can believe it now. You Shout now at me. So I'm in Mississippi. My sister's there. Whew. The devil started taunting me. You can't do it here. You can't do that. I don't know why he ain't. He's a slow learner. Made me mad. I said, Donna Ruth, come here. I said, I'm fixing to lay hands on you. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, your kidneys are no longer failing. God's going to heal you. you. I laid hands on her and rebuked the prognosis of the doctor and called it a lie. I said, God, I want you to heal these kidneys now. And would you believe three days later, hello, yeah. Said, I just want you to know, I just got the doctor's report. My blood pressure was better than it's been in a decade. My kidneys are functioning normal. Everything's good. I've come to tell you, miracles are happening now. Miracles are happening now. God is doing it now. You can believe him now. And so that brings me to my point, and I know you're glad I got one today. This, this fella had been laying in his sick bed for a while now. It affected every area of his life. He couldn't take care of his family. He couldn't make a living. Okay? He had all kinds of issues. Are you with me now? And, and so these, these friends, four Faithful, okay, four faithful friends. They had so much faith that they walked across town, picked up his bed, and carried him to where Jesus was in the house. Oh, I would to God that I had a faithful friend that would make sure he got me in the house. And so when those four friends got to that house where Jesus was, there was a problem. <laughs> it was already full. I mean, they tried the door, said, nope, can't even get one more person through that door. They said, all right, let's try the windows. Nope, can't even, can't even shove him through a window. Can you imagine this, this dude laying here on this stretcher? Completely incapacitated. Couldn't even wipe the drool off his chin. Completely out of sorts. Completely dependent on somebody else. Can you imagine his, his face when they said to him, well, hate to tell you this, but we can't get in the house. The doors blocked. The windows are blocked. But we have an idea. If you're okay with it, oh, y'all get ready to help me preach now. We might have to break tradition. We might have to tear some stuff up. We, ah, we might have to go beyond the norms. I wish somebody would get determined right now. 
And so they literally ripped the roof up. They didn't just like pick it up and move it off. No, they had to break it up. They had to rip the... Now, now Jesus is standing up in front of all of these religious elitists. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. All these educated, Bible-thumping, Torah-quoting, rule-making, keeping. Oh, I wish somebody would just, just, just kind of catch on. And Jesus is standing there. Can you imagine when all of a sudden dirt, dust, hay, stubble started coming down and hitting them in the head and getting in their beard? And Jesus looks up. Now watch this. He doesn't see the bed. He doesn't see the problem. He doesn't see the paralysis. You know what he sees? He sees four faithful believers. When he saw their faith, he ignored the paralysis. He didn't pay no attention to the physical maladies. He reached beyond the, ah, he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Never before had those words come out of his mouth. Never before had anyone heard him say, I'm going to forgive your sins. That was the day that faith unto salvation was birthed in the now. He said, you know what? I'm not going to wait till after Calvary. I'm not going to, listen, I got a plan. I got a purpose. There's some things that's got to happen. But today, I'm just going to put on my God hat and I'm going to say, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. We're talking about Jesus. Let, let, me, let, me, let me leave that story. I'll come back to it. Take you to another scene. It's known as the wedding of Cana of Galilee. Now, evidently, it must have been a pretty big deal because everybody was there. Jesus and his mama. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I said Jesus and his mama. <laughs> and, 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 and the party's going. And the wine's flowing. Are y'all hearing me yet? And I mean, I mean, they're having quite a little shindig. And, and they run out of wine. Oh, my, my, my. And so mama being mama came to Jesus and said, son, baby, these are my friends. They're getting ready to be really embarrassed. You, you, can't, you can't run out of wine on the wedding day. Baby, they're out of wine. You're going to have to. Now, now I want you all to pay attention. He didn't say, mother. He didn't say, mom. No, you boys listen to me. Don't be disrespecting your mothers. But this is what Jesus said, Okay. He looked her in the eye and he said, woman, <laughs> don't you know that got her attention? Ooh, nobody ever wanted to slap Jesus like she wanted to slap him in that moment. Talk to me like that, I'll smack you good. Woman, somebody get ready to go with me now. Woman, mine hour is not yet come. Watch this now. What have I to do with thee? He wasn't saying, what's our relationship? He wasn't saying, what's the connection here? He said, what am I going to do with you? Evidently, this wasn't the first time she put him on the spot. Evidently, he had been kind of a miracle on call for a while now. She knew what he could do. She knew what his power was. And so she doesn't even leave him. She doesn't give him a chance. She just turns around, takes it right out of his hands. And this is what she says to the servants. Whatever he saith unto thee. Somebody shouted at me. Do it. 
Oh, I would, listen, that, listen, Nike did not come up with that. Just do it's been around since the Bible. Just do it. And so the Bible tells us there were some water pots there. Tells us how much water goes in them. Now, it didn't say they were empty. But he said, fill them. Wait, wait, wait. I, most people don't never get this because you don't pay attention to the details. He said, fill them to the rim. Fill them to the brim. Now, if you, know, if you want to know what full to the brim means, it means it won't hold another drop. You can't put another ounce in there. It's, it's as full. I mean, it's just about to run over. Why? Because if he's going to do the miraculous, come on, he wants the biggest, come on, the most. Is anybody going to help me yet? Yes. Fill it to the brim. And when the servants had filled them to the brim, they said to Jesus, okay, we did what you told us to do. It's full. He said, okay, now, watch this now. Now, draw out and take it to the governor of the feast. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm fixing to tell you. They filled it with water. They drew out a cup of water. They presented the governor of the feast with a cup of water. But from cup to lip, it became wine. And not just any wine. He said, you know, sir, most people save the good wine <laughs> till men have full drunk. In other words, till they're intoxicated and don't know the difference. We give them the good stuff, get them drunk, then we can give them anything good. They don't even matter. It's like, you know, you start out with Merlot and you wind up with White Ziffendahl. Oh, y'all don't know about wine, I'm sorry. You start out with California's Rosé and you wind up with MD 2020. Oh, come on, y'all. You start out with Corona and wind up with Bud Light, I'm just saying. Oh, y'all know what that's about. Even the heathens ain't drinking Bud Light right now. My point is this. When he took a sip of that wine, he said, my God, man, you've saved the best. Listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. Until, no, see, 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 you made my point. Thank you so very much. That is not what it said. Hear me. The world wants you to think God saves the best to last. That is not what it says. He saved the best until now. God, God don't want you holding on to the last minute. God don't want you holding on to the last. No, no, no. He wants you to get in the now. He saved the best for now. It's, whoo, what are you saying, Brother Plymouth? I'm saying I don't know your history. I don't know everything you've been through. I don't know where you came out of. I don't know what's facing you tomorrow, but I can tell you what's in the now. God's miracle power is now. God's salvation is now. God's revelation is now. God's resurrection is now. Whoo. So, he said to the sick of the palsy, take up thy bed and go thy way into thine own house. Now look at the very next word. You could spell it N-O-W. You, you, you could say right now. But the Greek translator said immediately. Immediately. Everybody say now. Immediately. He picked up his bed, put it on his shoulder, and went his way. Remember those four faithful friends? Remember those four guys that carried him in? I want you to just eavesdrop with me for a minute. They're standing at the door now. 
They can't get in. They can't see. Come on, all the doubters have already had their minute. But now here comes the door all of a sudden open. And here comes one guy walking out. Come on, their, their eyes, come on, deceit. It's like, thank you. Appreciate it. Very kind of you boys to hang around waiting on me. But I can take it now. What carried me in couldn't keep me and won't carry me out. I got this now. I've come to tell somebody in this room, when you ask Jesus to forgive your sins, the very thing that drove you in here can't keep you, can't bind you, can't hold you. You got this now. Stand with me, I'm done. The scripture is very plain. And I'm closing with this verse. I'm not through. I'm just quitting because I'm tired. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm cutting it off so I'm not tempted to go back. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is so strong on me right now. Everybody say now. Have you ever learned something? Anybody here? You ever, you ever learned something that you didn't know? And, and, and you go, like, last or now? You learned that today, didn't you? And you know what you do? You go, oh, now I get it. Oh, now I know. So, so, so just humor me. Everybody say no. Well, it's, it's up there. No. Are you ready for this? K, now. K, now. To know, my, my old Bible college instructor, Brother Enzi, you know what he used to tell me? Knowledge is the discovery of ignorance. When you learn something, you go, oh, that's one more thing I didn't know, but I do now. I'm trying to educate you. God don't want you waiting for the next revival. God don't wait, you know, you, he's not waiting for you to get everything lined up. He's not waiting for you to get everything just, no. Let's do it now. Today is the day of salvation. Whew. Listen to me. It doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know we shall be like him everybody say k no i'm just trying to help you you're not waiting on him you're not waiting on some future moment in the history of, no it's today this is the day we are in the moment okay I'm, I'm done i'm done this is what the book said jesus is the same yesterday today so if he did it then he'll do it now if he'll do it now he'll do it then so listen to me now. No pun intended. <laughs> well, maybe it was intended. You never know. I, I kind of deceive myself on that one sometimes. But you think about tomorrow. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. Come on. Right. Whew. And tomorrow... Uh, no, 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 no. Tomorrow, tomorrow is today's. I'm just saying. When you're dealing with God, it's never yesterday or tomorrow. It's always today. God is perpetually present. He's not limited by time. He pays no attention to the calendar. It's all about now. So I am begging you, do it now. 
Repent now. Confess now. Worship now. Come on. Believe now. Hope now. Receive now. How does that happen? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Repeat after me. Please, I'm begging you. Everybody, bow your heads. Repeat after me. This ain't the first time we've talked about this. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. So I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Every evil word, every evil deed, every evil thought. In Jesus' name. And I confess my faith in your shed blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And Lord, I accept by faith your forgiveness, your blood covering. So I invite you now. I invite you now. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Let me speak in tongues as your spirit comes into my life. In Jesus' name. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Translation, Jesus never says no. When you repent, he forgives. When you confess, he forgives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister Samuel's got it. Let's lift our hands. Come on, lift our heads. Lift our hearts. Lift our faith. Lift our voice. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for the cleansing. Thank you. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now. 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 I used to work for a man who was very demanding. Uh, I was on 24 hour call. He expected me to respond, you know, immediately. And so one day we were standing out in the front yard and there was a little spot right by the door that had gotten a little unsightly. Uh, and there was a remedy and he wanted it fixed. Well, it was Saturday morning. I had somewhere to be. Of course, I had church on Sunday. And, and so I said, I'll, I'll get to it. And I'll never forget the words that came out of his mouth that day. He just kind of snapped his fingers. He said, let me tell you something. When I ask you to do something... I kind of expect you to do it on my schedule, not yours. Can I tell you that God wants you to get on his schedule? He is in the perpetual now. When he speaks something into your spirit, when he speaks something into your life, when he presents something to you, he wants you to respond now. One more time. Everybody in this room, altar's open. You can come down or you can stay where you are. Your, your posture, your position doesn't affect me one way or the other. But if you would lift your hands now and let your voice out, use your words. We've repented. We've confessed. We've believed. Now let God do what we've had. God, I open my heart my understanding. God, I give you my dreams, my hopes, and my tomorrows. God, I want you to bring me into the no and to the K now. God, I don't want to leave here like I came in. I want to leave here living in the no. I want to leave here full of your power and your resurrection hope. God, I want to leave here with you and your assurance that you're living inside of me I don't want to spend one more minute in my past I want to march into my now 
In Jesus' name we pray. Now I have taken you. I have taken you as far as I can with my words. Now it is wholly up to you what you will do with it. So I'm inviting you, come with me, step out and believe and hope, but more importantly, receive. Now this, this elder has been preaching with me this whole time. He has thrown his hands in the air. He's thrown his head back. He's acknowledged. He's, accepted. He's let me know, hey, I'm with you. And so right now, right now, I want y'all to join him. Just join him as he's joined me. From the top of your head, sir, to the bottom of your feet, I proclaim the healing word of faith.